Okay. I'll we'll call this special meeting of the Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee to order. Uh, first order of business, uh, can I have approval of the very brief agenda we were so given? So moved. So, you have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Susan, I'll turn it over to you. Um, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. This was a special request meeting. Um, it was a little short notice, but I really, really do appreciate you all coming and hearing uh, what we have and, and really just getting your input. So, uh, as you'll recall, we sent you an email the uh, last week, and that was to give you a little bit of a recap. I presented to mayor and council last Tuesday at the workshop meeting on options for Jack Emmy at Recreation Center. We had some good dialogue, but we also, uh, they've asked for your input and your recommendation. So I want to do a couple of things before we get into that discussion, and that is to everybody be able to watch the presentation. So everybody is pretty much up to speed on the conversation and how I presented it. I did give you a, um, copies of it. Do you feel like we want to go over it before we start any discussion? We showed them uh, the we showed them the five options. What I will say new this this last presentation is if you'll go to um, after the pictures of Jack Emmy, you'll go to the slide where it shows gym sizes. I wanted to make sure I did show council what the gym correlation sizes are with the different facilities. So this one right here, where I show you what the sizes of Jack Emmyet versus what the size of a gym is here, mm -hmm. that was really just so, so everybody had, had an understanding of where we're at in comparison to other facilities. Uh, then I moved into Options one, which is using the current footprint and most of the same building and renovating and uh, updating the current facility to be more of a multi-purpose space with a new uh, front entry to be off of the side, not to the, not to the street side. So utilizing what we have there, I showed comparable pictures, ones that we've done in the past. The, none of these comparables are new to you. The second option was one for just the recreation center. If we demolish that building and we give just a recreation center, then that would be option two. Option three was if we completely relocated a brand new facility on that property that's shared with the schools and partnered with them, and that would be something along the lines of several courts, and it would be you know, a fairly large building with locker rooms, restrooms, program space, the whole nine yards. Option four was again very similar in concept, um, but uh, I take that back. Option one was over there at the same location, but not as large. It didn't have the locker rooms. Uh, option four was a very large facility, what I'd consider a complex. It had the locker rooms, the restrooms, the whole nine yards. And then option five was current footprint, all basically gym, not much program space. So these are the same options I've presented in the past. Uh, what we've done was we just basically refreshed their memory and we wanted uh, some direction from them when we go back to see them on the 21st. If everybody watched it, you'll know that there was some discussion amongst council. They asked um, also for your feedback and your input. Um, we can get to that. And then Dr. Woodruff also has some updates. We have since met with an architect this morning and he had some good feedback. So um, Dr. Woodruff, would you like to step in and maybe give him that memo you have there so we can just yes. refresh everybody's memory? Take <coughs> Really do appreciate that y'all were willing to come in on a special uh, meeting. I know everybody has their own schedules, but uh, City Council, I believe, is committed to moving forward and getting something in your capital improvement program for next year, or depending on what option you decide, it would be uh, several years down the way. The memo that I just passed out, uh, let me read some of the, of the history for you, and obviously because the public is watching this on G10. Uh, the mayor and council met in a workshop, as Susan said, uh, on Tuesday of this week, uh, actually Tuesday of last week. And Mr. Spenzo, yes, yes. Mr. Yes. Uh, could you hand me an extra memo? Yeah, here we go. I've got it right there for the Lord. Okay. Right. Key factors to Perfect. think about is that uh, it's hard to believe it's been about 15, 16 months since the hurricane was with us. 
uh, September 13th through 15th in 2019. Nope, it's supposed to be 2018, so my apology for the, uh, the uh, misstep in the email. That's when the hurricane hit. Uh, Jack Amiette was damaged significantly to the gym. The winds lifted the roof there, uh, causing some structural damage. Also, when the roof came off, it peeled over and landed on the one-story community center. One-story community center actually got through the hurricane pretty well, except for the damage caused by the roof from the gym landing on top of it. And then, of course, we had water penetration. Uh, water damage did occur to both buildings. Uh, the major damage was to the gym with minor damage to the community center. Water damage to the gym impacted literally every component of it. Uh, when the roof came off, it uh, did not fully come off, but it allowed enough water to get in that it impacted the HVAC system, all the electrical, uh, the flooring, the walls, literally every part of that building was impacted by the water. Uh, there's structural damage to the gym. When the roof came off, we know that the roof and the system was built uh, under a different building code. And because of that, the type of protection that we give today for hurricane uh, sustainability is not, was simply not built into that building. So there's also structural damage, not just water damage to the building. We did have an insurance settlement with the city's insurance carrier. Uh, fortunately, we were able to negotiate uh, not only for the cost of repair, but to include the architectural fees. So even though we did not know and still do not know what we we're going to do with the building, the insurance company agreed that at some point the city was going to have to hire an architect and structural engineers as well as a contractor to actually repair the building. So we were fortunate to settle on uh, $750,000 plus or minus. It wasn't quite that number, but it's close to it. The city felt comfortable in that, in that we hired our own assessor to come in and uh, analyze the damage. And when you looked at what the insurance company said the damage and fees would be versus what our hired consultant said, they were within about $4,000. So we really feel like that we came out with a very good number. As you're aware, the City Council gave approval to moving forward with the refurbishment of the one-story community center. And I'm sure you've been by there and you see that it looks like it's brand new. Every, all the HVA systems have been fixed, the electrical, the lighting, the ceiling, the flooring, the painting. I mean, it looks really good. We spent about $45,000 on what we have done so far with the one-story component. That gives us a balance of somewhere around $700,000. The issues with rehabbing the facility, we talked to John Sawyer, who's the architect who has been working with us on many city projects, and he's the architect that we hired shortly after the hurricane to do the assessment. In meeting with John Sawyer this morning, here are the things he pointed out. If you decide to move forward with just rehabbing the building, just not any other options, you're just simply going to put it back. You're going to have to meet all the new building code requirements. There's structural damage to the building. The electrical system is going to have to be completely revamped because of the water damage. Uh, new HVAC, totally new roof truss system and roof. It's not just the roofing material, it's all the trusses that are in the building are going to have to be replaced. You're going to have to spend money on mold and water damage restoration. You're going to have to spend many dollars, and what are you going to wind up with? The status quo. Number eight on this sheet says there's no community gain. What you're going to wind up with if you just simply rehab the building <coughs> is you're going to have exactly what you had on September the 12th, 2018 with no community gain, and guess what? It's going to be an outdated facility. It may have new roofing. It may have new electrical. It may have new HVAC. But the bottom line, it was built to 1950 standards from a recreation standpoint. So you're really not going to have any community gain. 
you're going to have spent your money and it's going to still be an outdated too small facility now with that said I'd like to pass out some other documents to you based upon the meeting that we had this morning so if you will pass some of these one way and some of them the other <coughs> I apologize, but I think probably it's easier for me just to okay. stand up and, and hand these out. Got it? Okay. I got one of these. Yes. They're in groupings. Oh, no, no, no. There's no pack. Okay, I got you. Before we look at what I just handed out, let's go back to the options that uh, Susan shared with the City Council the other day. If you look at those options, what I recommended to the City Council was to think uh, along these lines. In my opinion, and I think you would agree, there's no question we need to do something with Jack M. Yet is positive. I think you would also agree that our community needs a new gymnasium. Now, whether it's a sports complex that the city and county are studying, that's not really the discussion. Whether we build a sports complex or not, we know that we need another major gym. And what I said to city council is, if you look at options three, four, and five, Though, I'm sorry, three and four, those options propose building a multi-million dollar gymnasium over at Jack M. Yet. And what I said to City Council, I'll say to you, I think that's the wrong place to build it. We need another gym for the various activities that we're doing, but it, we also need it in a location where you have the other gyms. One of the great things about the Commons Gym is that you've got a high school gym, a middle school gym, and the commons gym within viewing distance of each other. You got Jacksonville High School gym just down the road. So when you have basketball tournaments or whatever, it's generally in the same location. And the other part is, it's close to hotels and motels. So whether we ever build a sports complex or not, you already have the uh, the basic elements of at least a major basketball complex. And I'll also say to you, look at your own recreation participation numbers. We need another gym just for us. Forget tourism, forget heads on beds, forget the TDA, forget the sports complex. If you just look at what your own statistics are saying, we're out of space. And I'll say to you again, we need to build something at Jack M. Yet, I don't believe we need to build the large new gymnasium at Jack M. Yet. What I would like for you to consider is really what I called option seven. To be honest with you, I'm doing this so fast, I forgot there were only five <laughs> options we showed council. So I have no idea what option six is. But bear with me and, and look at what we are talking about in option seven. First of all, you have a graphic that shows the facility that's there today. If you'll now go to the next one, which is the aerial photograph, you'll notice it has on there demo and then the uh, one-story center. What I propose to you is that uh, you move forward you as an advisory group and city council as a group, that you move forward with the agreement to demo this building. And the reason why, not the front part, not the one-story part, but the two-story part. The reason why is everything that I told you in the memo. If you are going to spend all the money to do electrical, plumbing, roofing, flooring, wall structure, structural, 
all of that. Why would you ever put that money in a facility that's too small? Why not use that money at least as the seed money for building something brand new? Something that the community would really need. Now, if you now go to the handout, it shows option seven and option seven plus. Now, because Clemson lost last night, I can't get up to 50 or 42 points. But that's the reason why it's not option eight. It's just option seven and option seven plus. This is actually almost to scale. And what you'll notice in, in this graphic is that you have the one-story facility, that what you're doing is changing the entrance from the area of South Drive, because right now the entrance is over here. You're reversing the entrance to the parking lot area. You're able to keep the playground where it is. And talking to John Sawyer's architect this morning, he really liked the fact that you're entering a recreation facility and you're going to have the playground right there because guess what? There may be uh, young mothers or grandmothers who bring their children there who also are going to go right inside for classes or whatever. So option seven would be to build a new multi-purpose facility. By multi-purpose, you could have it where it is tall enough, not for official basketball, but when you're in your four, five, six, seven-year-old group who's playing at an eight-foot height net or rim, uh, you know, a 20-foot ceiling is acceptable. And you wouldn't have to worry about having those, uh, those uh, very expensive and heavy uh, devices that lower and raise the, the backboard. You could have those as movable. But what you do is you would build about a 6,000 square foot multi-purpose facility and you'd separate the current building from the multi-purpose with a very nice corridor and if you've been down to the Sturgeon City building if you think of the corridor there you could set up in the corridor where you would access the multi-purpose building from the corridor you'd access the current community center from the corridor and what you'd also be able to do with special <coughs> events is set up tables where people could come in and register. Or let's say you're having a wedding event there. You could have people, you know, gather in the corridor. But what you do is build a brand new building, connect a brand new corridor to the current one-story community center, and you would change the way you access it. Now, if you look at option seven plus, it has, I think, a nice variation off of it. What 7 Plus does is it not only adds the multi-purpose facility, but it also adds additional space for community space. So you would add about 50% more community space to the one-story community room you have today, and then you would have the multi-purpose, and I think what you'd have is literally a almost brand new facility that could last that community for a very long period of time. All of the exterior things would continue to be there. The exterior basketball, all of the splash pad, baseball, all of that. And of course the details of what goes in each of those boxes <coughs> is what you hire an architect for. Now you hire me and pay me the big bucks just to draw nice little drawings <laughs> like that and give you some concepts. But I would say to you, uh, this is something that uh, Susan and Michael, Alan Baker, who is the facility maintenance person, and John Sawyer, our architect, all said these two concepts make an awful lot of sense to us. Now whether they make sense to you or whether they make sense to the city council, that's another thing. From a cost standpoint, what we know is you have $700,000 in a checking account right now. Actually, it's in Gail Maid's hands, so, you know. We have no idea what this would cost, but I will tell you it's not nearly as expensive as the other option. I would guesstimate that you're probably looking at adding to your current $700,000 anywhere from another $700,000 to another million, too. 
I think you're somewhere in the ballpark to do this of about 1.4 million, maybe up as high as 2 million, just depending on what you do. But from a manager's office, and I will tell you, I think we can afford this. And I don't think that it will in any way <coughs> jeopardize the other things that we're going to learn in your master planning and the other things that are in the capital improvement program. I think this is something that the city can in fact afford to do. But you know, with that, uh, we're here to provide you with those options and to get your, your input because what council has said is they really want to make some decisions on this shortly. They ask us to ask you for a special meeting and we'd now like to hear from you as to what options you think are reasonable or if we haven't presented something you can support, what do you think we should do? Sir? I guess a, a question and a comment. It's unfortunate that uh, this decision has come to us at this time because we're right in the middle of developing a park and recreation center master plan. And what we do with Jack Amiette is an integral part of what we're going to do. So it's almost the cart before the horse. You know, one of the things we talked about in the preliminary discussion of the master plan was to have regional within the city of Jacksonville areas, you know, the, the neighborhood parks and then much larger parks like the commons, uh, Jack Amiette could be one. Uh, I guess Susan and Michael, uh, the question would be, do we need more basketball court space? And I guess the answer is yes. yes. <laughs> so that goes, if we go with Jack Amiette, we need basketball courts there. But Dr. Woodruff has said he doesn't think that that's a good place to invest in basketball courts. So we as an advisory group may not agree with you on that. We haven't really thought that through and come up with other options. There's some space, uh, I think we talked about this, completely undeveloped uh, north, went up towards Williamsburg Plantation, which might be a good spot. Uh, do we want to put more basketball courts here in the commons area? Well, for an economy of effort, that makes a lot of sense, but you know what the public's going to say? You're putting all the stuff in the commons and you're ne neglecting the old New River area over there by continuing Continue. to dump stuff here in the commons area, which for efficiency, it makes sense. But do we want to do that? Do we want to go ahead and put basketball courts at Jack Emmett or some to be developed area at Williamsburg Plantation? I don't know. That's, well, that's what we were going to talk about in the, in the master plan. Well, let me, let me suggest this. First of all, remember how you currently or how you previously used the gym at Jack Emmett. Uh, this plan, which you may or may not like, will allow that to still go on. It's your, what I'll call, smallest league as far as age group. Mm. So a multi-purpose facility there would allow that facility to continue to be used. Now, one of your options certainly is to recommend to the city council that council do nothing with this until we finish all of the master planning. And if that's what you think we should do, that works fine with us. I think the important thing though is to begin the discussion because this is part of your master planning. Uh, you're going to master plan not just from a theoretic standpoint, you're going to master plan from a specific standpoint. You're going to say, here is what we want Jack Amiette to be. Here's what we want Northeast Creek to be. Here's what we want every park to be. Sir, if I can interrupt you. Um, I would agree with the majority of what you're saying and being a part of Jack Amiette going in and out. Uh, what it's used for and the demographics, the age groups that live in that area, to use it as a basketball or, I mean, we did volleyball there. One of the coaches was behind me. We had volleyball <laughs> practice there. It's very difficult to play basketball, let alone play volleyball in that facility. So I would agree not to put a basketball gym there. The outdoor one does it justice for those that come out there and, and play pickup ball. Um, I don't know what the constituents out there have said or stated if they want a gym or not. But I think that if we went with something that's more multi-purpose, you know, birthday parties, reunions, um, the splash pad when people are out there to, to, to seek shelter from the, the, the sun would do that community more justice than us putting another gym there. I would have to agree with you, sir. Have we uh, asked the neighborhood what they uh, want? Absolutely. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let me say this. Yeah, I'm we'll, going to speak up right now. Yeah. Um, 
Actually, I was at outside today, yeah. and I talked to two children, one nine, ninth grade, one tenth grade. Okay. They were playing basketball outside, mm -hmm. but they said they would be rather playing basketball right. inside. inside. That's the center of the city. Yeah. I call it the donut hole <laughs> because not a lot is there. Okay. Um, I, I, I was looking at the plans because with these plans, we still have the outside basketball courts, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we have space, to, a footprint to still build everything. We might just have to take those outside basketball courts up, right? Uh, I'm not following what you're doing. I don't this think with this. other yeah. option. I'm just saying yeah. it's not that option, yeah. but yeah. there are other options because we still have more space, even if that's parking lot or something else over there where those outside basketball courts are. Well, and, and it's not too far. I understand that most of the major events happen here, but it's not so far in Jacksonville that you could shuttle back over there. And if we start developing that area, by at least putting something there, I mean, people come from other places to use that baseball field. I don't think a survey was created to decide to put a baseball field there. And, and there are other people that use that, that splash pad from, from other communities. So we understand that even people in the county use these facilities, you know? So I'm not just thinking in terms of just that community, but even if we went with that, little kids don't stay little forever. And what I understand about this plan, or to anything, is that it's a 30 plus year, maybe 40 year it, uh, decision. And I may be here, <laughs> I may not be here. But my concern is being here at that time and looking back and missing on the opportunity we needed to, to make that what it was. I remember when I, growing up here, we, everything was happening on that side of town. It was. And there was a lot of trouble that didn't happen as a result of having certain facilities available. When they moved football away from Jacksonville Junior High, that left a hole in that area. Because football used to be out of Jack Amiet. When the basketball, we stopped using basketball courts over there because they wouldn't regulation, that created a different issue for that area. Um, we have an opportunity here. That's why I would just want to make that point. And we can use a court for basketball, but we can also use that for other issues. I, I thought one time we brought on the table the possibility of a, you know, a storm shelter. I don't know if that Dr. was ever. Woodruff brought that up last Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We did discuss the possibility and feel right. free to elaborate on that. Um, you know, using those outdoor courts in a little bit of a different manner and covering them. So if we didn't get, you know, a gym uh, larger than what we have, at least we could facilitate outdoor basketball play um, with a little bit more versatility with covering it, keeping more shade, more sun, more rain. And then utilizing it, um, you, but it's still an outdoor court at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's still an outdoor it's court. Outdoor. And that it's doesn't change if it's cold out. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it doesn't really. change the issue, yeah. and it still don't change the issue of having inside yeah. um, square footage to do other things. You could do volleyball in a basketball court. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah you could yeah. do basketball in a basketball, basketball court. court. <laughs> but you could also do uh, a yeah. family reunion and birthday parties in the basketball court. Yeah, a lot of stuff. And if we we could even use dividers in there. There's other things we can do with that. But if we have the smallest space. We can't do any of the things, that, yeah. the other things that we can so do. So, Mr. Jackson, is it your, uh, and I'm just trying to decipher what it is you're saying, is it your your thought to have a, what we would consider the size of a 50 by 84, which is a, you know, regulation, uh, regulation, regulation, regulation court. high regulation school court. court. Right. Yes. That's my recommendation. How about two of them? Well, well that, that's, that's, one, that's one of those options, options that are in one there. Options. I'm with the councilman. I think we should go big there. I mean, like. So some of our some of our challenges is just the footprint. Um, the the size that you're referring to is exactly what we have behind us. Sure. So but. that is uh, two courts regulation, both middle school, high school, and college, because the full court becomes college regulation. So the options uh, for three and four, four is what Dr. Woodruff has indicated. That's yeah. the only real footprint that we could, and that so what you're saying is is if we went that route you would be completely building a brand new building, not renovating or not at it, you know, doing anything with the and current the, And that would take, what's the partnership with the school? Yes, yes. ma'am. Yes. 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 What, yes. What's the partnership of the school look like? I'm, I'm, that's kind of fuzzy with me. Well, Are you square dance or? Uh, yeah, pretty much, we can square dance together. Uh, the city doesn't own all the property that is between the elementary school and the splash pad. 
uh, the vast majority of that's actually in the ownership of the school board. So that doesn't mean that school board wouldn't cooperate. Uh, the one thing I do want to make sure you understand is uh, this plan will not accommodate a large gym. You know, what you, would, what you would do in this plan is you would eliminate the storage building that you can see in the aerial photograph <coughs> where Michael stores stuff. And you have to build another one of those someplace on that site. But to take up what I consider valuable space for storage is just not good. I don't know, and the architect could certainly identify, is it possible for us to use the space in this area to get a gym, one gym, that is regulation in size? I will tell you, I think that's going to be very difficult to do. So if you are looking to build a regulation gym there, one or more, then you'd be looking at either a different site or you're talking about substantially possibly tearing down the one-story building. It just, there's not enough, you can only put five pounds in a five pound bag as the old saying goes. How about so, expanding the, our available area? I mean, doing things like moving South Drive and Eastwood Drive and buying some property. Well, what you're doing there is making it, pardon the bluntness, financially unfeasible. Yeah. You have to remember, uh, dreams have to be realistic okay. dreams. And what I'm saying to you, and I will say very bluntly to the city council, there's only so much money. Uh, if you look at options three and four, five, six, you're talking about five and six million dollars. Let's say that Jack M. Yet had never been damaged and it was operational. And the city council was coming to me and say, Richard, we want to spend five, six, seven million dollars in sports. I will say to you, council, unless you're willing to raise taxes or unless you're willing to go into a 20 year bond debt, which does require repayment. We simply don't have that kind of money. Uh, if you look at expanding the footprint of this facility, make sure I have it up correctly, uh, all of this over here is private property. And believe me, we've tried through Community Development Block Grant to buy some of the New River Apartments before. Simply can't, can't do that. Last time they had it up for sale, it was $13 million for the whole thing. So the point I'm making is we, we need to find a way to balance, uh, there's a probably a very inappropriate way of saying this, we have champagne taste and we have beer money. Actually, I'm not so sure we have beer money. We probably have saltine cracker money. We're going to have to find out what can we actually afford to do given all the priorities that the city has and all the demands the city has. On the other hand, you know, that's why we're here. If you as an advisory board believe that building a full-size gym or two full-size gyms over there or doing nothing until the master plan is finished, I encourage you all to state that so we can take that back to city council. Are we going to vote on these options tonight? We would, we, hope, like as, we would hope that either tonight or in the near future. And the reason why is we're putting together the capital improvement program. The world doesn't stop if you don't decide tonight. Yeah. But I can tell you there comes a point where we get down to finalizing things and we have to know if it's going to be built in the FY21 budget, we need some decisions in the near future. And, and just knowing a lot of people that, that live in that, in that area, I think it would be a, a huge advantage for that community if we were to go with option three, I mean, or four. I mean, I think there needs to be something like uh, some kind of facility there for the uh, for the kids in that in that community because a lot of those families they don't have transportation I know we're getting our public transportation transportation going but they can't get over here to the commons and and play in these gyms here I mean when the weather's bad I mean the outdoor court is wonderful it's nice but where are they gonna go dr. Woodruff I, I think uh, Michael and Susan have, have agreed that we need more basketball courts uh, the crux of it is where should we put them? This is almost an opportunity. And I'm looking at long-term costs of everything combined. If we go with the uh, 7 or 7A option, yeah, we've got a more uh, purpose area there. But someday we're going to have to build basketball courts someplace, which is going to be an additional cost to what this costs. So my thinking is why not go ahead and take this opportunity 
if you want to call it an opportunity, I hate to hell, uh, say that a hurricane was an opportunity, but we're going to have to rebuild here. Why not rebuild with one or two basketball courts here, use that insurance money towards it, and avoid having to build basketball courts somewhere down the road someplace else? Unless there's something absolutely wrong with this site, which there, there's there is no difference. No, there's. I mean, I was just there today talking yeah. to parents and kids when they were letting out of school, and they do want something to do, and they do need an area out there. And uh, just talking to them, I don't know what use. I mean, I like the idea that you, okay, a good multi-purpose area is nice, and it's better than the little half uh, court basketball court that they have out there now. But what use are we really going to get out of a multi-purpose area? I mean, how many people are really going to hold their weddings there or their receptions there? It, to me, it just sounds like it'll be an after-school program, which I know we also need spaces for. However, are we going to get a, the maximum use just out of a multi-purpose area, or is it just going to be a big square building? And a basketball court would be a multi-purpose area. It, you know, it's and you can do that as yeah, well, too, yeah. and that's why I said. Now, whether we go for one or two, I mean, I, I still think that we should review the master plan and get our ideas where we wanted to have everything placed, but we do need something placed there. At the minimum, one full-size basketball court, if not two. It's but that, I would think, would roll into our master plan. Dr. Woodruff, is the, is, did we check concerning tourism? Because you did talk about bigger space, but not saying it has to be two courts. What about uh, tourism dollars for that? Did we, well, I, I can't remember if we didn't even discuss that. In the, uh, we have not, but I can tell you in a presentation yeah. that I gave to the working group of two council members and two uh, county commissioners just last week, uh, you, you're not you don't have a lot of tourism money yeah well, you know you get way. you get a million dollars a year the city collects a million dollars a year for the next nine years or eight years i believe is all that's left two-thirds <coughs> of that money can be used to build something one-third is for promotions so do the simple math a million dollars two-thirds of it is six hundred and sixty six thousand dollars well guess what 150,000 of that is already pledged for the next 20 years to pay off Sturgeon City. So you're now down in simple math to $500,000. Yeah, if you can get the TDA to say, the city TDA to say that this will produce heads on beds, then over the next seven years, you could probably get three million, three and a half million from there if they're not willing to fund one other thing for the next 10 years in the way of a physical improvement for the community. And I would say to you, that's not a wise decision. You should never spend all your money in one area. One of the difficulties that you have faced and we have faced as a staff is this. The city got so far behind in its parks improvements and in its building improvements that everything got to be, if you pardon the expression, dilapidated. You look at everything that y'all have done and the city council have done in the last several years. Look how Wooten Park used to look 10 years ago. It had an asphalt outdoor basketball court that had potholes in it. And look what you've done. You've turned, Wilton, uh, you've turned Wooten <coughs> Park into absolutely one of the finest parks anywhere. Look at what you just opened at Northeast Creek. All of those type things. And I'm going to, uh, once again, as the financial person with the city, I'm going to tell you, if you, if you want to put all your eggs here with two basketball courts, then don't ever ask for anything at Northeast Creek to be improved. The money will be gone. You only have so much money. So what I'm pleading you with to do is not necessarily this plan. I'm pleading with you to be realistic in what you're asking the city council to do. Now, going back again to the TDA, the TDA cannot bond anything, only the city council can. So if after eight years left, the formula goes back to only one third of the money available for physical, that means $333,000 of which 150 is already pledged for the next 20 years, you only have $150,000 left, 183,000 I guess technically left. Okay, uh, you, we have some tough, some tough choices to make. I would say to you again, uh, don't underestimate what you can do in this multi-purpose area. Uh, you're, you're basically building the gym that you have right now 
but you're building it bigger. We're not calling it a gym, we're calling it a multi-purpose space, but it, it would be a little, be the same general height, it would be a little longer and a little wider, it still wouldn't meet the technical specification. If, if I could, that's, uh, if I could step in. I just want to give a little bit of perspective from a programmatic standpoint. Um, you know, I would be remiss to say that what we have right there is a gym now, because truthfully, we don't play but for our little guys, and we do everything under the sun in that space that we have now. So what we really have right now at Jack Amia is a multi-purpose space, um, because we can't utilize it in the sense of our league play. We don't have pickleball, we don't have volleyball, and we don't have any uh, of the ages that are playing basketball in any of our leagues except for the little folks. So I really should have been referring to that space as a multi-purpose space, to your point, um, uh, because that really is what we've been doing. We've had everything under the sun in there for rentals. We've had everything from fairs to special events to large reunions. So it really is all of our rec center serve as a multi-purpose space. That said, we still need program space. So we really need to think about if, if the recommendation is gym space, two courts, then we have no other room to do anything else with. And that is also a concern for me because the community did say they want fitness, they want computer space, they want multi-purpose space. So, um, you know, I want to try and be true to what the feedback was from the community. The community um, was split. They want a gym. They absolutely said they grew up with a gym, but the community is also a little bit of an aging community and they want craft room, they want art room, they want a fitness um, they want all of those other amenities when a recreation center is also in the community. So those are other things. And I will also just put this out there. Um, the parking is a real challenge for us. Safety is a concern on the parking. If we have the turnover for basketball, volleyball, whatever, um, is, a, is a real thought process. When we have the splash pad open during the day and all of the facilities and baseball and potentially games going on in that facility i don't know that we as a city want to take all of that in. we would have to be very intentional to how we program that space so we would maximize its use but limit the opportunities of which we can actually program it with unless the city wants to purchase other space for just parking um, so i do have some concerns when it comes to i know it's a silly thing to be concerned about but um, having people safely egress in and out of a building with all of the other car traffic that comes and goes when you have to go in and out and you have one way in and one way out um, is just something I thought. So those are just my, my thoughts. Well, Susan, option three and option four, which is one court or two courts, which would be a new facility over towards the, the school right now. Correct. For the diagram. Would there be any multi-purpose space in there, or is it just two? It is one or two um, the two options that we have over there is three and four. I think it was three and four. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Is one of them was um, the the larger of the two, which is want to say the option four. It was very similar to what we have behind us: massive gym space plus program space and locker rooms. A locker rooms are a real big issue for. Um, the folks that come in to play tournaments, they want a place to change. So option four was the Mac Daddy. It, it, it's what we have behind us um, with program space. You can take that down a little bit and go to option three, and then all you have is um, gym and very little program space. Okay, how about five? We haven't talked about five. Oh, five is uh, <laughs> on the current footprint, on the current location, mm -hmm. it's all gym also. So there's no program space on that one as well. And we'd also... Uh, lose the one-story building that is there right now. It looks like it. Yeah. Yes, we would have to because you don't have enough space. When you do the dimensions on the footprint we have right now, you can put the court space that we're referring to, but then you have nothing else. And that was why I mentioned I did a minute ago about program space. You can put it there, but um, again, then we have all gym and no classroom space. I got a follow-up question on that. Then the one-story center that we have right now, what is that utilized for inside of that one? So that one has a computer room. It has a workout room. Well, this is all pre-Florence. Yeah. It had a workout room. <laughs> it has game tables, and it has a computer room, and it has offices yeah. and okay. the restrooms. Well, it's that small? 
Um, no, I mean, because yeah. what I was thinking, what I was thinking was saying is, if you had, let's say, a one quart gym instead of the multi-purpose sure. area here, could this one-story center be what the rest of the community is looking for sure. as a craft room and stuff like that it, as well, it, too? It would be small. It would be small. Right. Yep. I mean, it's probably <clears throat> this a little bit bigger than this room. This room, right? Oh. I would think. Y yeah. Oh, no, yeah. maybe yeah. half this. Yeah. Melanie probably yeah. does. A little wider. Small. It's smaller than this room. Wow. Okay. Um, well, that order, that's me. <laughs> if, if an architect could fit a gym, then that would, I mean. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to reconfigure something that we just spent $45,000 on making Correct. it look right. I, that would be a waste I of money in my mind. If we took I out think the, that's where we've discussed the, it, so. the play area and, and place that somewhere else, because it's a relatively small play area, could we increase the building size in the uh, option 7 plus? We could certainly look at that. You know, one of the things that uh, you can you can get longer. I'm not so sure you can get that much wider. Now, right. again, uh, if you if you look at the demo, uh, this interesting uh, portion That's is storage. Store space. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in this drawing, what we have done is to move <coughs> because remember, there's a retaining wall here, okay. and mm -hmm. there's a substantial, probably four or five, probably four foot elevation drop to the parking lot. Right. So in the drawing, what we have done is to move that footprint out to this border right here so that the gym would become wider, if you want to call it a gym, right. multi-purpose, whatever. So, you know, I suppose uh, one of the things that you're asking us to look at is figure out, keep this general site, how big of a gym can we put in here? Yeah, could you make it uh, long? Expanding it and possibly bringing it further, uh, further down, further yeah. you know, down towards the uh, playground. We yes, can certainly look at that. Oh. Uh, this the safe uh, recommendation is, and what looks like the most feasible is what you're recommending. Uh, but I would, <laughs> I'd push for option three. And I'd bend that architect and see just what he can do with a full-size gym and really see what he can come up with. And if he can come up with something that, that uh, with the space and whatever, compromise here or there, uh, I think that would, that would go a long way. Um, could I, ask for I see your money. The money situation is. Could I ask again, for clarification? It, yes, option sir. Option three actually proposes putting it over near the near the school. Right. Mm -hmm. On the other side. Yeah. 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 Are you actually saying try to do option three, or are you trying to to do option okay. seven but build as right. big a gym here? Option seven. Yeah. I think option three was actually on the footprint. Yeah. No, option yeah. three is not. No. no. Oh, it's I'm sorry. It's off site. It's off site. Option three, four. Oh, so it's option five. five. So dark, then uh, option eight uh, would actually be option, here. <laughs> yeah. Option five is the footprint. Option there. five is on the footprint. Dr. Yeah. Woodruff, the, the, in option seven <clears throat> and seven plus, that multi purpose area you have designated, <clears throat> that is 80 by 80? Yes, sir. Okay. And how wide is the corridor? Uh, corridor is 15 feet wide. Okay, so the math tells me that without the corridor, you could go 95 feet. Mm -hmm. So you've got 95 foot long and 80 foot wide. So whether that's, you know, just a rough figure, figuring out. So it tells me you might be able to fit something in there that would meet the needs of a of one regulation basketball court. Uh, a lot of it's going to depend on what you put down for a floor and how high the Mm -hmm. Roof is. Is. So, so another question would be, could you? Is it possible to go up to twenty-five feet versus twenty feet? Well, the answer there is yes, but I'll also remember this: uh, the taller the roof, yes. the more reinforcing, the more yes. cost of the structural, yeah. uh, the oh. more everything. Absolutely. Yeah. So, can, can well, the bigger the span, I mean, yeah. that's the other part. One of the things that that we know is that uh, a room like we're in right now, it doesn't really take too much money to put a roof on it. But the larger the spans without any internal supports, the greater the structural steel, the greater the footers, 
And that's why you see the price going from a plan like this, which the architect and I agreed would probably be somewhere 1.5 to $2 million, to a plan that's now going to be up to two and a half to $3 million. You know, and you get more for your money, but the old saying goes, you gotta, you got to pay the bill. Can I ask this too? I, I, I mean, I know we upgraded to baseball field and it looks really nice over mm -hmm. here, but how much usage do do did a baseball field really get? Because it, it gets a lot. Of it gets does. Oh yeah. But see, it also gets people from the county. Everybody uses that. Field. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. Oh, you see nobody? Yeah, you don't see. Oh, it. Then it, even at yeah. Melanie, y'all get the kids. Everybody out. seems to be over here. They, they, they have a men's they, league that plays in the summer. They play from April through July. Right. On the and, weekends, every weekend. So that was my other thing about having the court because you do have other areas coming in. Even we got Camp Johnson over the street. If we actually could create walking Absolutely. traffic again over to the gym yeah. via Camp Johnson, then it offers opportunities for that, that shopping center to grow as well. Sure. So I'm not just looking at it from simply just the basketball court. Yeah. I'm trying to think about other opportunities. I know we need to start yeah. growing out in this area. And I think as a, a, for a younger generation, if, I mean, I know this is, everybody calls this a retirement town. But I, I think really I've never heard. No. Of that. Oh yeah, they say it. But yeah, yeah. we're yeah. the but youngest the city in America. Age, you know, yeah. Point eight, the yeah. retirement town. But yeah. Uh, but okay. yeah, but there's there's nothing here for the the younger population to do. And I think uh, like just a multi-purpose room and you just wheeling basketball courts in there. I mean basketball goals in there. Things that's really not. You want to have something really uh, nice and presentable. You know, you have people coming from out of town and not just just the commons. I mean, this is it's a really nice facility, but you want to have something else within the community for, for folks to be able to use, too. Um, and and I, I just know that area, it, it's a need in the area because, you know, I know I don't know if it's a, a agreement or something we would have with the Boys and Girls Club, but I know a lot of time they're over crammed up in the cafeteria at Clyde Irwin. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to do, I mean, for the kids. It, there's nowhere to go and, and run around if, if the weather's bad, if it's raining or whatever, cold out. So if you have a gym, they can at least walk right across the field and well, they can again, do things inside. Uh, let me say this with as much politeness as I can. Everything we build with city taxpayer dollars, in my opinion and my recommendation to council, is going to be to benefit the city recreation program. I have great respect for the Boys and Girls Club. I don't believe that it's our responsibility to build their facilities. Okay, you're right. So I'm just saying. I want you to think about your responsibility. I want you to think about the city government's responsibility, and that is for the city to spend its money on the city recreation program. And I say that with kindness, because I know the Boys and Girls Club do a great job. What I would recommend from what I'm hearing... Uh, Let me ask you a question. When you talk about partnership opportunities... Yeah, that's what I was saying. Because other cities do yeah, that. Exactly. That's what I, I thought you would mean. Yeah. So that's I, what I was getting at. Been, I mean, you know, I, I, mean, there's a, I mean, you said we have a partnership with the school. I mean, evidently, the Boys and Girls Club have a partnership with the school because they're using their cafeteria. So, Again, uh, partnerships are great. That's where we get a lot of things accomplished. But I would also say to you again, if city taxpayer money is going to be spent, it needs to be spent on your recreation program that the city government operates. You know, it's no different than... The Catholic Church, they've got a gym. Fine. They raise the money to build that gym. Uh, in the interest of time, because I know you're yeah, coming up on your going. master plan, uh, I think it's appropriate uh, for you all to know that as manager, I'm going to recommend to the city council this option. I have no problem with you recommending a different option because my job is to recommend to council what I believe the community needs, but also what I believe the city council can actually build. I would encourage you though, from the discussion, for you to recommend this option be modified so that you build as large a gymnasium there as possible. Then we can hire an architect to come back and actually say to do this cost this money, to do the following cost the following money. Is that a fair way to do it? Yeah. I agree. With, with this option, just to make clarification, the parking, we don't have to modify any parking. No, it's going to have enough spaces. Well, we know it's not going to have enough spaces, but we don't have to go back to go, you know, no. one plus two, we need five more. Well, you're not going to get into stormwater management. You're not going to get into building parking lots. 
you know, the, the one thing that we all know is that if you increase the footprint of the impervious area, you're storm going water. to have to address right. stormwater. And one of the great things is that uh, you only have so much land, so if you're going to build a larger facility, you're going to have to figure out what impervious area you're going to take up. And the last question I have is, if we chose to move the playground to another area on that, we do have space on the other side with splash yeah, pad is? Absolutely. Yeah, We've already, we discussed Moving that. the playground is not a real issue. Right, okay, I just want to make sure. Because mm -hmm. I know that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. It is to me. Yeah. I like slides. <laughs> me too. I do too. I've been filmed doing it. <laughs> okay. All the uh, way down. All the way down. I'll tell you, if there's no more discussion or questions, uh, does anybody like to make a motion? Make what a motion. So move. Well, be, be specific. <laughs> Some move to what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, city manager uh, just said about uh, putting a, trying to get a bigger gym, going to the architect, and let him put forth his recommendation and also with ours. and. Uh, see what the different prices between the two and let him submit it to the city council. So what you're proposing is basically option seven, but instead of a multi-purpose area, you see what side of the gym we could fit in that exactly. footprint. Well, for clarity, let's call that, as Mr. Speranzo eight. said, eight. option eight. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, we still haven't figured out what option six is, but that's okay. That's okay. Make okay. Six minus. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? One. Okay. It carries. Can I just get one clarification? Yeah. When we say gym as large as we can get, are we asking for a one core or two core? Oh, or one just want to leave Right now, one core. Okay. Okay. Just for the, think, for the pricing purposes. Yeah, I don't think two quarts would. Um, no, I just want to make yeah. sure that we are, no, we're clear. Unless like two stories. Yeah, ah, we're with a walking track and Susan, everything. Yeah. Right? Another question. We talked about the, uh, the gym height a couple of times. Is there a league, uh, high school, junior high, whatever, yes. that requires a certain height yes. for it to be a sanctioned gym? Yes. 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 So if you look at, we, I included that in this because it is, it is actually... Um, here at the Commons, we have 30 feet. Mm -hmm. It is recommended um, uh, 26 is the bare minimum. We have 20 at Jack Emmett as it is now. 26 is the bare minimum, and we have 30 here at the Commons. Yeah, I think our guidance to the architect should include that. It should be at least the bare minimum if it, it will meet, fit. It has to meet regulations yes, standards. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank, Thank you all very much. Thank Appreciate you. Your uh, we have input. a Good next discussion. meeting next door, so uh, we would certainly welcome all of your input on all of our. Next. Thank you. Okay. So much. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. <laughs> Let's all adjourn. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.